This is what you can do when you make a movie that gets six Academy Award nominations. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. So you've been nominated for an Academy Award before for a short film that you made, so. The very coveted short film category that uh, everyone in Hollywood's trying to get. Only a select few get nominated, nominated for, nom nominated for one of those. I imagine that was one heck of an experience. So is there anything from your time with an Academy Award nomination back then that you're keeping in mind to just enjoy the ride right now? Yeah, get used to loss. Uh, that's the main thing. Um, so I'm very prepared for that. I'm not going to turn my back on you guys. You guys, that section's my... F they've been some of my biggest fans over there. All four of them. Tychopaths. Tychoholics Anonymous there, <laughs> Tyka Pess. You know who you guys are. 800 seat theater, I think you got a lot more than four fans here. And you actually have someone that you worked with in the house right now, producer Carthew Neal is here. Oh yeah. So let's give him a round of applause too, Academy Award nominee. I always think that finding a collaborator that you want to keep working with is something that's super important. So can you tell me a little bit about how the two of you met and when you knew that that creative connection was there? Well, I knew when I realized he was the only person that would work with me. That was the first thing. That was the first sign. Uh, but we've been working together since 2002, 2001, 2000, something like that. How many years ago would that be? I left school and didn't do maths because it was boring. Now look at me. So here's my advice, don't do maths. Does anyone know how long it's been? 18 years? 19, 17, 16 years? Who cares? <laughs> we know each other and he's done a lot of projects with me. We did Hunt for the Wilder People together and um, <laughs> And yeah, we just we work very well together. That you do. Can you tell he's me a little bit? He's insanely good looking, which is why he's not here because I forbade it. <laughs> how about your entire producing team? How do you guys decide how many people you need involved to make this movie? Because I know you also have two other uh, people in producing capacities that helped you out with this. So what is everybody's specialty? Uh, um, I don't really know that. <laughs> Uh, it says that I'm a producer. Uh, that's, I don't think I don't know if that's fair, but I uh, I got the I secured the rights to the book that I adapted. It turns out that's all I needed to do. Carthy did all you know, did the majority of the work, and when I found out what you actually have to do as a producer, I thought I'll just stick to directing. And um, so he did all that. So you have to ask him, but he's too good looking, so he's not allowed to be here. Directing, writing, and acting. Yeah. So can you tell everybody about the uh, decision to cast Thank you for calling yourself? it acting as well. That's very, very kind. In all seriousness, it is quite the performance, and I think it goes without saying that that is a very difficult role to nail on screen, especially the way that you guys portray Hitler. Yes, this. but try directing looking like that. That's, <laughs> that's even more challenging, I'd say. Uh, you suddenly become a lot nicer uh, when you're on set. Uh, you just be like, uh, I think we should do it again, maybe this time. Um, and this is not an order. Uh, it's a suggestion, you know, take it if you want. I'm not forcing you to do this this way. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was very, it's, you, you know, it, what's horrible is seeing a reflection of yourself in something and after you forget what you look like and you sort of see, you're like, oh my god, that's right. I look like that. Luckily, it was a stick on moustache. I've uh, blown this illusion for you guys. Uh, <laughs> thinking that I went method. Uh, imagine going method with that character. Uh, it was a stick on thing. So, whenever I wasn't uh, in the scene, I would take that off and take off the jacket and stuff. And um, yeah. I mean, it's very, it was harrowing for me. I had to have my hair straightened, look at it, and dyed black. Um, acting's really hard. <laughs> the kind of things that you have to put yourself through. 
it's like you've got like diamond mining um, and acting. Those are the two, <laughs> I'd say, the two hardest jobs in the world. How about casting? In particular, let's start with Roman here, who is absolutely incredible in this yep. movie. You've worked on the MCU, and his father has shot some of the movies in the MCU. Is that where the connection started, or was that just a coincidence? Uh, no, so Roman's dad is a very good cinematographer. He's done a lot of, uh, I think, most of uh, Martin McDonald's films and a lot of MCU films. And um, I did a commercial with um, his dad in maybe 2011 for Tesco's. And... Uh, no one ever saw it because, no, I'm not going to go into that story. Something to do with horses and horse meat in supermarkets in England. The British people here will know what I'm talking about. Um, but, yeah, but, so, but Roman came in about four weeks before we started shooting. So, so we were desperate. And, um, but we, we, I think we auditioned about 1,000 kids. Um, and we were just trawling Craigslist uh, just for months, just like, have you got a kid? Can they remember words? Um, are they cute, but also blue-eyed, super white? Uh, do you kind of want to hate them and maybe kind of love them? Um, but he came, and this is the first thing he's done, and he, yeah, I mean, he, 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 he blew everyone away. Uh, Thomason, who plays the who plays Elsa, she her parents are like theatre royalty in New Zealand, who I've known for many years, and so I've seen her kicking about in Wellington as like a toddler, and then suddenly I saw her on a poster for Leave No Trace, and um, realised she was an actor, and she was at the top of our list right right from the beginning. Oh God, there's so many cool stories like this. Is this interesting? <laughs> Here's the story about the casting. We auditioned people, and someone got the role. <laughs> How about some of the people that you didn't audition, like Scarlett Johansson, who, I'm going to keep saying it, Academy I Award auditioned nominee. Her. I auditioned her, but she doesn't know it. I was watching all her films. So essentially, you're auditioning for roles your entire career. It just never ends. It never ends. The struggle never ends. What was it about her that made you say you are pitch perfect for the role of Rosie? Because I get the impression that, I mean, she just brings so much out of that character. Well, she, so that character was based on Ellen Burstyn and Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, which I think is one of the great single mothers of cinema. And she's, uh, and having known her through other circles, she's very fun, very clownish, and, just, and she is a mother, and so she sort of, already had those qualities that I had recognized. And yeah, she, did, I mean, she, was, she was one of the first people that we cast, I think, yeah. Did you think that it was really important for the person who played that character to be a mother? Uh, no. <laughs> I think it helped. I think it helped that she liked children. Um, but I like to think that actors of that calibre can pretend pretty well. <laughs> so I would hope that if you didn't have kids and you had made that many movies, you could, you could pull it off. <laughs> that she does. Rolling through the cast, though, was Sam Rockwell's role the one that changed the most after casting? Don't clap for him. <laughs> uh, is it what? Is it the role that changed the most after you cast it? Was there any tailoring of that role to him? Yeah, once he, just, he, once he agreed to do it, I realized that we needed more of him because he's so fun and, he's, yeah, and he just is who he is. So I... I I made more of that role, and I like to think with that role, um, he, that's before the war. What are you doing? Uh, the before the war, he, uh, you know, he he was like going to that club from cabaret, and uh, you know, he's hanging out in those circles, and joined the. He became a, a soldier, and uh, 
and he has a lot of regrets, and <laughs> you ask him, ask him. But yeah, he, all of those characters are very fun, and, I, and it just, yeah, it made my job a lot easier having those guys there. You also work really fast. I don't know if I have the order right here, but was it, was it jo Jojo Rabbit to Thor to Mandalorian? You're already shot, next goal wins. So how, how do you kind of keep up with it at all? Do you just work super fast all the time? Uh, no, the key is, this is my advice, just say yes to everything <laughs> and then don't sleep and just have panic attacks every night. And um, then just sort of, yeah. It's just smoke and mirrors, and you know, just try your hardest to not be fired from all the things you've said yes to. Um, but most of my films have been, so this film was about 40 days shoot. I just did a soccer film in Hawaii with Michael Fassbender, and uh, that was 30 days. And, but, uh, so what, uh, Eagle vs. Shark, Boy, What We Do in the Shadows, and Hunt for the Wilder People, all 25 day shoots. Um, Thor was like 90, so after 25 days of Thor, I was so bored, um, <laughs> I had no more ideas, but I'm used to, that's my wheelhouse, it's just very fast shoots and just kind of, just trying to get as much stuff as possible, so yeah, I really like a good fast energy. As someone who works super fast, do you try to get everything you need on set or do you find yourself finding the story in the edit at all? Uh, Yes, in the edit we find a lot of the stuff, but on set it's just, for me it's about harvesting, it's like going to the garden, harvesting images and, and ideas and things, and getting as much as possible, and then going to the edit, and then, I mean, you, when I start a film, it's like saying, I'm going to make a lovely penne arrabbiata, and then by the time you get into the edit, which is like the kitchen, you realise that you've only harvested the stuff for a chocolate cake, and... <laughs> then you're trying to make a sort of mix of the thing and you sort of have to accept what you've collected might not be a nice Italian dish, but just a sort of shitty cake. Yeah. Kind of prefer cake you, anyway. And then, you, and then you put out some posters and say, come and eat some Italian food. Uh, but yeah, it is... We, yeah, we do try and get different variations of performances as well. Like, yeah, so I we'll, we'll always get the actors to do heightened versions of the scene, very normal, boring actor versions of the scene, and then something in the middle, because um, yeah, you never know. Do you find that when you wrote the script and you're acting in the movie that you feel more inclined to improvise or stick to what you wrote? For my scenes, um, just having worked with myself as an actor for many years, I just feel like I bring a lot to the table, and just there's just something about working with me as an actor. When I feel very, I feel it's, I'm always excited because I never know what's this guy going to bring. Um, he obviously hasn't learnt the words that the writer version of ourselves have, has written, um, but that's kind of exciting and dangerous, and I like that. And so that's why I give the actor version of me maybe 20, 30 takes to, uh, you know, just explore. And I give the other actors maybe two. And, um, yeah, and then as a director, for me, as, for me as, a, as an actor, I think the director version of me is so, is so generous uh, with that. And he's one of my biggest supporters and collaborators. And... I will continue, I hope that that relationship continues. Um, I'll definitely, as soon as he calls and says, would you be in another film that you've written for yourself? I mean, I will definitely say yes. <laughs> so what you're saying is we can get a Taika Waititi one-man show in the very near future, and you could just be every single role and play every single role behind the scenes as well. That's the long game. I believe in you. You can do it. Can you tell me a little bit now about working on the score of the movie? Sorry, I've just noticed the, the top of my socks, and I don't like... What's on those socks? The foxes? It's just a, a grey band. It doesn't feel good, so I'm just going to sit like this now. Michael Giacchino is one of the best of the best, so what was your collaboration with him like, and what was some of the direction that you gave him before he even jumped into actually scoring the film? 
Um, well, Michael, uh, he's uh, he's an up and coming composer. <laughs> and no, I uh, I said to him our first meeting. He said, "So, what do you what, what the, what's the feeling for this?" And I said, "If you can make this film sound like Up, um, then that's all I want." And every time he came with something, I was like, "Yeah, it doesn't sound quite like Up, though, does it?" Um, <laughs> And that's what I asked you to do, and so uh, I mean, it's got just the feeling of that film, which is one of my favourite um, animations, and you know, always makes me very emotional. Um, even now, uh, that's yeah, I, I felt that, that just there was something about that that I loved, and um, and I think he kind of yeah, he made it feel original and unique, it kind of like up. What was it like getting the rights to songs like, you know, you, you have a Beatles song and it's not easy to get something like that. So what is the conversation with Paul McCartney like when you're saying, let me use your song for my Hitler movie? Oh, well, it's just like anyone, you know, you just call them up and you're just like, hey, or I'll just text them, hey, Paul, what up? Um, I did, well, we, we had to send the clip and our idea to... Um, to Paul and to Ringo, I mean, they're people, I guess, and, um, and also to uh, Yoko, and ask, yeah, I mean, just sort of say, like, yeah, this is what, this is the idea. Um, I guess the, well, what was lucky is, you know, they responded to it and, and, and accepted it. Um, I think the danger, I guess, is them looking at it and saying, are you trying to say that we were like the Hitlers of the 50s and 60s? Um, so, but I, I was watching these documentaries on the Hitler Youth and all the rallies and stuff and just seeing the crowds and how, it, and when I was watching that I thought, oh my god, this looks just like Beatlemania and uh, it just, yeah, it just struck me like that, you know, this one person or this, this group of people could capture the, the, the hearts of a country and, and create such fervour um, and it felt to me like the sort of best way to explain to modern audiences what it was like for them, for that country. And how is it like shooting that opening sequence with Roman? Because it doesn't matter how many times I've seen the movie, when I see him running through the streets, there's something about that energy that's kind of infectious. So is it, you know, as, as wild and crazy as it feels watching it on screen when he's just kind of running all madcap through the streets like that? Uh, yeah, that was, again, I wanted to show how excited he was with this, you know, with this guy, and 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 in the time, what you have got to realize is that if you weren't in the Hitler Youth, I mean, you would be bullied relentlessly. I mean, you, it's, it was something that every single kid aspired to be part of, and um, so you didn't really have much choice. You didn't really, you, you know, to kind of like to rebel was would be very hard for you, and he was caught up in that whole thing from an early age, and. I think just knowing myself as a ten-year-old, like I wouldn't have been quite as aware, and I think I just would have wanted to fit in. And you know, I think a lot, of, you know, being older, it's very easy to say, "Oh, I wouldn't be like that," you know. Yeah, but ten-year-olds are ten-year-olds, and it's very hard to, to to sort of think back about how what you were like, and just the idea of trying to be cool or trying to fit in or trying to not be bullied. Is, is, is a very, it's, it sort of um, informs a lot of what you do at that age. Um, so yeah, so that just, his excitement about going to this camp and everything and not really knowing what it's all about um, was something that I wanted to show there. And, um, and also I guess that also links to his imaginary friend, which really is just a, it's this idea of a person that's cobbled together through this guy who he thinks is his hero, probably there's part of his dad in there and other role models and part of himself. Um, and that's the only real reason that I would feel like I could have done that role is because he's a buffoon and an idiot and I'm the same. And he's, you know, it's, it's basically another 10 year old because he comes from a 10 year old's mind so he can only know what a 10 year old knows. And so that for me felt safer than, also it was never my intention to play that role when Fox Searchlight said, we want to do the film, I said, great, and they said, but we only want to do it if you play the role of Adolf. And I thought they were trying to like pull the last 
Jenga block out of their company and uh, topple it. Uh, uh, I mean, look at me. <laughs> well, don't look at this, but the um, but it did make sense for it to be someone who's not very well known, and because if it was like a big celebrity playing that that role, I think it would have taken away from the heart of the story, which is about the kids. I also think you're a pretty big celebrity right now and well earned that title too between all of your movies and the accomplishments on this and also I did get the wrap up sign and we have posters to give away but I'm going to make this last question super quick and painless. True or false, there could be some time or more time in a galaxy far, far away in your near future. Uh, see, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not a painless question. <laughs> Um, I made it true or false. I love it. People that he was approached. Everyone approaches me and says stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> All right, guys. Who wants a signed JoJo Rabbit me, poster? Me. 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 You can sign all of them on your own if you want. Keep them. All right. So what we're going to do is we've got some trivia questions about the movie, and there's some folks from Arclight in the audience, so I need you not to shout out the answer, but to raise your hand, and then you're going to get called on. All right. So first question I got for you. What's Swastikas. <laughs> poster for you. Oh, damn it. What's the name of the young actor who plays Yorkie in the movie? Who plays Yorkie, the kid in the glasses? Who, what's his name? All right, I don't see anyone from the theater. Oh, I see you right there in the gray. Yeah. Archie Yates, yes. Do we want to bring her one of these posters? Archie Yates, who, since this movie come out, is now is uh, apparently, rumor has it, um, is uh, signed on for the Home Alone reboot. It's pitch perfect You think I'll get a right thank there. you from him? Nope. Who wrote the book upon which Jojo Rabbit is based? Seriously? All right, I got it right there in the hat. Did you look that up? Christine I saw you Lennon's. look at your phone. <laughs> All right, That'll poster do. for you. You are first. <laughs> Taika, do you want to throw in a trivia question? No. Hell no. What song do Elsa and Jojo dance to at the end of the movie? I got you right up front. Name the German, do the German name. Up there. Yes. Two posters, right no there applause. and right there. I love that. No applause. No applause for the person who has German words. <laughs> All right, I believe we have one more to give away, right? All right, the last question. Where did Jojo, where did Jojo Rabbit, as in the movie, celebrate its world premiere? I got you right there. Yeah, yeah, I'm like pointing at you. <laughs> yes. TIFF 2019. Whoa. There we go. That's all of our posters, and that's all the time we have. Please Thank give you so Taika much for coming a big and round for of staying. applause. Please Thank stay you very much. in your seats as well so everybody can exit. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Collider FYC. Check it out on the Collider Video YouTube yeah, channel. Check it out on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for coming, everyone. And, uh, there's uh, there's uh, free pizza out there uh, somewhere. He's uh, lying. Just go to the bar and just.